Monster Monster Gardeners. Today we have a very exciting new product that we're going to introduce you to that is called the Eco Clone. Um, they come out of Humboldt County, the parts are sourced of course in China and today we have the creator of the Eco Clone here with me. Um, this is Zach. How's it going? He's uh, the guy, the mastermind behind this. There's a lot of differences that you might not notice just from the top aside from the steam that's coming out of there. But there's a lot going on with this cloner that you're not going to see with your typical cloner, like an easy cloner or a turbo cloner, one of those that uses emitters. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit more about your product? Yeah, thanks, Scott. Um, yeah, you know, I've been cloning for about 20 years or so, and I've used a, a ton of different things, you know, like the little cubes and, and, and almost all the other cloners. And I always, I was just trying to find something that might be a little bit better, a little bit different, maybe not have any problems. What are some of the issues that you have found with some of those machines? I mean, I've always noticed that if you don't keep them incredibly clean, they tend to harbor pathogens and fungus in there. And there's extra steps you have to take, like adding hydrogen peroxide, um, running things like drip clean to keep the emitters from getting clogged up, the sprayers that actually spray the roots. Yeah, that's that seems, heat is heat's a really big one. And I know uh, some friends put like, frozen bottles of water in there to cool them down right. and I just feel like that's a little excessive. Or a water chiller even yeah. for the larger units. Yeah, water chillers are expensive. Um, and then like, you know, those little sprayers, I always tend to bump them and they break off and I have to get new ones or they clog up and something happens. And, and, and it shares all that water in there and so, you know, if somebody brings a disease into the group, it just gets spread about the whole chamber. And so I was trying to find something that I could kind of alleviate some of those problems, make it uh, a little bit you know, you'd have a little bit better idea that everything was going to come out well instead of wondering if this time something was going to happen and then you were going to be short a couple cuttings and you're going to have to try to figure out how to get those back in so you had everybody that you needed. And, and so I started thinking about, you know, we're up in Humboldt and a lot of the trees out there, they live off of the fog bank that rolls in every day. And so I started thinking, well, maybe fog could be something that we could work with and start researching it and trying different things. and. Uh, you know, a lot of the fog options were kind of a heated steam kind of thing, and we don't want that because like we're the fountains. heat. Yeah, like the fountains, yeah. And so then I started looking into ultrasonics. You get a, a much smaller fog molecule. You end up with, I think it's about under 10 microns around, which is just about small enough for the plant to breathe it in through its stomata. So it can expend a little bit less energy. It can gather a little bit more, a little bit faster, and uh, and alleviate some of those other problems that, that you kind of had. So if you were moving parts, um, the heat issue is completely solved with this. I mean, the steam that comes off of it is, is more or less cold. Yeah, you um, can. Looks like it also alleviates the need for a humidity dome because there's so much moisture that's actually coming up in, underneath the canopy. Um, that's something that I've always felt like was kind of a bit of a pain. Yeah. Uh, were the humidity domes because they crack and you know sometimes they're a little loose or it makes it too hot in there or too yeah. humid in there. Um, fog, you know, something that we've been looking for for a long time. We actually have a fogger that, that we've been selling for a while now, but not in this quite kind of capacity. It actually requires the use of a compressor. And right. it's more about spraying a very small micron spray to feed the plant or to do uh, pest and mold mitigation. Foliar type. Exactly. So this is something that we've been looking at um, or wanting and something that we need in our space, I feel like, for a long time. I mean, some of the other cloners trying to addre address the heat issues they just stuck a fan on the side of it. Yeah. That's one more moving part. Exactly. Right? This thing has very few moving parts. I mean, you were telling me earlier, it has a piezo, a fan, a reed switch, and a circuit board, and that's that's, that's pretty it. much it, right? Yeah, that's it. And you know, the the, the they all have a generally a, a rating for how many hours that they're supposed to last. And so our piezo is rated for a hundred thousand hours. It should if you ran it constantly, it should last you ten years. Uh, the fan is rated for 30 to 50,000 hours. It should last between three and five years. Uh, and then the reed switch, it's just a tiny little thing. Uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's our fail safe. And so if you forget to fill up the reservoir with water, uh, this reed switch will shut everything down so nothing overheats or breaks. And we have a little green indicator light that tells you it's running well. If you run out of water and the reed switch falls, that'll turn red so you can walk into the room and instantly know some, uh, there's a problem going on. Um, and, and those things, you know, they are electronics. There is a, a possibility that they'll fail earlier than they're supposed to, so we offer replacement parts. They're only $15. We're not trying to, you know, it's not an arm and a leg to, to get a new one of these things. And, and I know, you know, some, some of the issues that I've had with some of the other units is that that pump will sometimes fail. And, and it's the same pump that you would use in like a, a fish tank kind of scenario. Or and a I, reservoir. Yeah, and, and I use those all the time, and, and they do. Occasionally they, 
they just they're just done with life and they end up costing about a you know a hundred bucks or something to replace so I was trying to make something that you had less options for failure and even when something did fail it was a very easy fix and a very inexpensive fix should last you a lifetime that's awesome now the reservoir here um, this holds about two gallons? A little bit over, yeah. And does that last for about two days? On, on setting five, so you can adjust the amount of fog that comes through the system. And, you know, setting five, you have a, a, just an absurd amount of fog coming out of it. And we would suggest kind of, you know, until you know your environment and how, and your plants and your environment and how they're adjusting and dealing with the fog, turn it all the way up to five. And then you can start turning it down to see exactly where everybody's happy with. And as you start getting some roots, you can definitely turn it down. We would say three is, is a pretty ideal number. And on three, your reservoir will last for five days, four, four to five days. Awesome. And no need for um, you know, a cloning solution or any kind of food in the reservoir? Not at all. Uh, I don't use anything. Um, we, I have tested it and used uh, a various different cloning solutions just to see how it went. I don't really see much increase and it's just it's a bigger expenditure. There's more stuff to clean. Seems unnecessary. So you would actually recommend not using using any sort of cloning solution, but still like a cloning agent, like yes, a, like dip and grow. A or... hormone, yeah. I like you know a, a nice high quality liquid. I think that that they work best as opposed this. to a gel. As opposed to a gel, yeah. What about the powders? I've always been a big fan of the powders just because they're really inexpensive. They are really yeah. expensive. Uh, you know, I have not tried the powders unfortunately. Okay, but standard cloning procedure: take it off at a forty-five, scrub the edges on the sides a little bit, pop it into the cube. You know, I don't even scrub the edges off. Okay. I just, I cut it at 45, I tried to get, you know, as few, as many nodes down there as possible without being, you know, a massive branch or something, and uh, throw it in the dip and grow, toss it in there, it's great. Have you ever done any experimentation to see whether or not that clones will take without using any hormone? Uh, we were going to, we were planning on doing one because we have a friend that was really interested. He's a, he's an older guy that's been doing this for 40 years or something and he was really, he's like, oh, I think you could do it without cloning solution. So that's definitely on the list. I've done it before um, when I was younger. I used to help my great grandmother. She was, uh, she was a caterer and she got a lot of exotic plants from Luther Burbank and she was always wanting to make cuttings. Um, but she was on a fixed income, so she couldn't afford the hormones. They were really expensive in the really? early 80s and early 90s, back when we still had margins in stores. <laughs> and uh, um, we would actually just use dechlorinated water, and we had pretty huh. good success with that. And we didn't have you know, anything quite as fancy as this, so I'd actually, I'd like to hear back from you in the future to see if that's actually a viable technique. Definitely, definitely. We'll get, we'll get a test going here right away. And, and actually, I was thinking about doing a, you know, a liquid hormone, a gel hormone, a powder hormone, and a no hormone, same same uh, species, and see exactly what's you know is there is there much of a difference? Is there any difference? See I mean, what happens. Just the fact that you don't have to put any food in there saves you a lot of money, yeah, and time and fewer moving parts. And how many how many watts does this draw? Um, it runs on DC energy, and it's only about 0.68 amps. You know, 0.7 at the absolute most. That's awesome. Yeah. So we were talking about on five. Uh, you know, you're about one seventh of the amount of energy of a normal hydroponic cloning thing. Once you're down to three, you're about one ninth of the amount of energy. And the technology is scalable, right? So you could you could technically maybe put a second piezo in and have like a 60 or 90 site or 120. Definitely. This is a 60. This site, is right? a 60 site, yeah. So and we were we're looking into designing ones and talking to a few of the major farms in, in the country and stuff and see what size they like. But we're talking about doing something between 130 and 230. That'd be Amazing, something to fit on like a racking system. Uh, yeah, a racking system, and then maybe not not having reservoirs, having fresh water coming in, a fresh drain coming out. Everyone would just get what they needed when they needed it. They're very lightweight. It doesn't hold any water except in the reservoir. And as it condenses, you'll get like you know condensate that starts to build up. We have a drain and, a, and with a clamp that you can drain it without moving it real quick and easy. Um, but if it was on a rack where you had a fresh water in and a drain coming out all the time. It would be very, very light. We put them on, you know, a little uh, movable tray so you could pull them out, work on them, push them back in, go to the next one, pull it out. And that's where we were looking to, you know, maybe 230, because we're talking about a, you know, large little, scale nursery, almost a thousand plants on just a, a little area. That's awesome. Now these neoprene inserts, I want to talk about too, um, because they're actually really unique. Uh, nobody else in the industry that's making a cloning machine has these, and it looks like me that. The uh, idea behind them was that you would be able to stick multiple cuttings into one disc. Have you, in, during your R&D, have you experimented with that at all? We have, uh, and we haven't put, you know, I think there's space for seven of them on there. Uh, we put three in so that, you know, there was like, 
you know, put one and then there's a, a, a little area between the three, so you, maybe you're less likely to have like root entanglement. Uh, three worked great and we were planning on putting, filling every single one of them up. Cause yeah, as what you were showing there is like, you know, you can see how they all come out like that. We'll get that one out of there. And uh, so you can really get them back into the edges. And so they aren't all crammed right in that very center spot. And they, they are separated a bit. And so, yeah. It seems to work well. So you could take this and turn it into, you know, 180, 180 seconds. Really easy. And maybe more. And we'll, we'll see how that goes in the future. I'm super excited about this technology and this machine in particular. This is this is the first time in a long time, honestly, that something has come across my email or my desk that I've said, oh wow, this is something that we actually need to look into. Um, and so far in our R&D, what we've been finding is that it, it is working incredibly well. Uh, we have uh, put a couple of cuts into one uh, a couple tomato pieces, a couple pepper pieces, just to see how long it would take to root. So we'll have some information about, on that for you guys in a little while. Excellent. Um, is there anything else that we should know about this uh, this particular machine, like MSRP? I know you mentioned that it has a one-year warranty and all the parts are replaceable. Yeah, it has a one-year warranty and, and we also see a cell replacement parts, very inexpensive. Um, and MSRP, we're looking at about 350. So right in line with the similar 60 site cloners. Exactly, yeah, we, we didn't wanna, you know, it. I do feel like it may be a, a slightly better technology. And it's also, it's a really newer, new technology. People aren't used to it. A lot of people have a bad taste in their mouth from having issues and, and plant die off with other things. And so I think there's a little bit of an education curve here where we need to show people that, that this is, has less problems. It is slightly better. Um, and, and so for them to come into the store and maybe not understand that if it's the exact same price, it'll be an easy choice. Well, exactly, and one of the most frustrating things to me about cloners and why I mostly currently use just rock wool is that the water getting hot, the roots cook, you either gotta put it on a recycling timer or you gotta buy a chiller. Chillers are expensive, they also take up a lot of electricity. Yeah. Um, you know, not everybody's in a commercial structure where they have, you know, access to 200 amps of power. Yep. Um, a lot of residential people are very limited. I mean, the average circuit in a residential home is 15 amps with the exception of like your stove, your refrigerator, your dryer, things like that. Yep. So it's uh, important to keep in mind that, you know, electricity is a finite thing and it, it's not in overly abundant, particularly here in Northern California, you know, our grid is stressed very, very thin. And uh, things like this that help to save time and money, I mean, it's great. The fact that it has a DC controller uh, means it's really easy to hook up to solar, right? Yeah, it's very easy to hook up to solar. And that's something that we were thinking about doing for our larger units, for people that are out on the mountaintops. And off the grid, as they say. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, offer them something. And, you know, that was another reason why I was uh, looking towards this and, and you know, having that massive uh, decrease in energy use is like Arcada up in Humboldt. They passed a ordinance uh, about probably five years ago, maybe six years ago, where they were trying to move things out of the city center, and so they passed something that was a uh, energy tax. If you're you know over so many percent over baseline, they're charging you almost 40 percent extra on your taxes. So anything that you could use, LEDs, anything that's going to lower that down, help helps people out a lot. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming in. I appreciate yeah. your time, sir. Thank you. Um, these machines are going to be available real soon I'm hoping um, we're going to try and get them up on the website and uh, we're doing this for you guys because we know once you get your hands on one of these you're going to buy more and more of them because they work so well. These items and many other fantastic, astounding, wonderful items are available exclusively at MonsterGardens.com. Thanks for tuning in guys.